Welcome back. In this video, we'll see the first method for creating a data-driven test. There are various methods, but in this video, we'll start the simple and the basic method, create data-driven test. Now, what are the steps you'll be following when you're creating data-driven test? The first step is we'll be just recording a simple script, what we have done previously. Later on, we'll add some descriptive names to variables. We'll also add data to that particular data pool. And finally, we'll just play back the scripts. So these are four simple steps we'll be using. So let us see practically how we work on creating data-driven test. Welcome back. So let us see practically how we work on this data-driven test. So uh, data-driven test can be created by multiple ways. So let us see the first method. So I have just created a project too, and I'll just record a new test here. Name it as M underscore data-driven test. That's a name which I'll give it. You can give any name, that's not a problem. Data driven test, click on finish. Now I'll start the application that is classic Java A application. Right. Make sure whichever fields you select, those fields would get recorded firstly, and which fields get recorded, only those fields can get parameterized. That is the first method which we have. Okay. But now I'll be showing you some other method also. Okay, for example, if I select here new customer, click on OK. And in this dialog box, the details are already given. If you see the uh, CD name, the CD title and some quantity. Here I'll enter the credit card number. Let's say 1234, 1234, some random number, expiry date. Later, you can select any card type from here. Let's say MX, enter the name, the street name. city and state and then the phone number click on place order but before clicking on place order let me show you whatever fields I have entered that is nothing but the data now if I want to parameterize create a new data set so what I can do is I can click on the fifth option which says as insert data driven commands so if I click on that button I'll get a dialog box so this dialog box is right now empty you see there's no object, no command, no variable. What I can do is I can just drag it and I can select any one field which I want to parameterize. So if I want to parameterize the name field, I can select leave it. That particular field, you see that's a name, set text and the value. This thing would be captured. So if I don't want, I can click on cross. But imagine if I want to parameterize all the fields, I won't be using this one by one option. I can just simply select select the entire window okay leave it and when once i select you can see all the possible fields which can be parameterized are been captured here okay so let me just move this dialog box here now the font font would be a little bit small which you have to take care about that because this is the standard font by uh, the company itself ibm rft now if you see the first item which is given as test object that is 191795 okay so set text which is given the symphony so this is the text which is which it has captured here okay so same way quantity if you see which is given as quantity one so these are nothing but the test objects so what you can do is you can just double click and you can modify the variable name so here i can say the cd name here i can say i can just delete and write it proper name that credit card number and here I can just double click and type as card type expired expiration date is correct and here I can just write as name street I can here write as city comma state rest all the details are same you don't have to worry so the parent object name is this one that is 1795 and what is the column name which will be created in the data pool that is nothing but CD name so this is the method by which you can select and if you want to reorganize, you can just select this. Suppose if you want this as a last field, you can just scroll down like this. If you don't want, you can simply click on this cross sign. So it will be removed. Same way, there are some fields which you don't want. Let's say item, I can click on cross. Quantity, if you want, you can keep it. Rest fields, I want to parameterize. After doing that, you can just simply click on OK button. Click on place order. OK close the dialog box and stop recording so basically what we have done is while recording okay I have first filled all the details on that 
application and then I have selected as insert data driven commands. So this is the data pool which we have. So this data pool will contain of quantity, credit card. So let me explain you what exactly it is. Quantity which is given as Java LANG that is given as string that is nothing but string data type. So this is how you can read about this particular data type. Here card is given as data type as enumeration because we have a drop down. Automatically drop down would be captured. So what you can do is you can just right click insert new record and here you can mention as quantity 2 you can mention the credit card number like this you can select the card type by just double clicking select MasterCard and like this you can fill all the details whatever required okay here also I'll change it pub 1 2 and I'll write as DEF street Hyderabad right once it is done you can just move out okay so I have entered only two records now if I want to execute this particular data driven test so if you carefully observe now instead of giving the values I have got as DP string credit card number DP string stands for data pool the data type is string and the credit card number is nothing but the column name okay so this is what they have captured here same way if you see here that's a data string dp string that is given as name dp stands for data pool and string is the data type okay now once it is done click on this run button it says data pool has been modified do you want to save the changes i can say as yes now i'll click on this next button after you select next button if you see that's a data pool iteration count how many times do you want to execute so I'll say as iterate until done that means if I have 50 records all the 50 records should be executed until it is finished so iterate until done should be selected remember after selecting this you have to go to next select the option as iterate until done if you do not select this particular steps the script will not execute for all the iterations click on finish and click on yes so let us wait so we are expecting that it should execute two times because we have two data set records right see the first record has been executed it is executing actually right so here you can see that's the second time it is executing with the same window okay so if you see DEF street and this so it is working absolutely fine so two times iterations it is working okay that means it is successful right so you can click on this close button I mean automatically it will be done right and finally the script has been executed and you can see the particular steps have been written with no failures and no warnings so I can just click on this close button and so I hope you have understood how to execute one particular test with this data uh, data pool okay I have just entered two different records and finally it has been executed properly right so I hope you have understood and that's all for this video tutorialspoint.com simply easy learning